Hello and welcome to another video. This is going to be uh, about uh, descriptive th statistics, uh, some useful information that uh, tell us a lot of stories about our data. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start by doing this, uh, uh, directly going to the data. I'm going to click on the ribbon twice. Obviously, it's not showing. I'm going to go to the data analysis and uh, go to uh, descriptive statistics uh, I'm going to go ahead and do this a little bit uh, up and down until I get to see it so here we go it's the second after the covariance variance I'm going to go ahead and say okay and now it's asking me for the input range I'm going to go ahead and click on here click control shift down arrow to select all the data and of course i need to leave it as column i'm going to include the label in the part and i'm going to go ahead and tell it where to put the output for me uh, i like to have it right here so and also uh, summary statistics we need to really choose that confidence level uh, uh, for me i'm going to leave it as nine five percent that's an acceptable one that's the default one anyway if you don't check it it's going to leave it as 29 but sometimes for other tests in future you might really like to increase the confidence level for me to 99 percent i mean that has to do with the uh, more accurate uh, testing here we go we're going to go ahead and click on ok in a second you'll be able to see uh how easy it is to generate uh, the descriptive statistic for you uh, mean is uh, this is the arithmetic average for the data it's 83.74 uh, there is a lot of things you could get uh, directly from looking at it. the medium is meaning that central value so it's uh, there's a, a very high uh, uh, grade overall the mode is uh, uh, there is multiple people who had more hundred in this test than any other score uh, you need to look up for uh, strange in values, big or too small. Uh, for example, if we ended up uh, knowing that the score is going to be between 0 and 100, and we ended up getting uh, the mean to be of uh, like 30, and the medium uh, is going to be uh, uh, like maybe 80, and the mode is 100. So you will see that there is a uh, uh, kind of data like scattered. Uh, it's not really uh, maybe either you could look at it if it's uh, enter wrong and you could correct that but uh, there is no two large values and two small values that would be very helpful to check for that from directly from those uh, directly from those uh, values we all know about the standard deviation it's uh, how far it is from the mean uh, and also the sample variance which is the square of the standard uh, deviation uh, this is very interesting to see uh, the skewness in the kurtosis. Uh, the skewness is, has to do with that. Um, uh, you know, it's looking at the non-symmetrical uh, uh, shape of the distribution. And if the skewness uh, is too big or too small, uh, you know, meaning negative, uh, that may be... Uh, if it's too negative, it's going to be skewed to the left. If it's too large, it's going to be skewed to the right. Uh, the best uh, uh, value that you could get with the skewness is close to the zero or zero, zero which is really going to indicate uh, a symmetric, symmetrical uh, skewness, which really has something to do with the normal distribution. Uh, the same thing with kurtosis. Uh, this is uh, very similar. The kurtosis is very... Uh, in this case is m minus 0 0.9 uh, it's again the measure of the peakedness of the data and it's again it's the closest to the zero it's the more normal distributed uh, the data is going to be so uh, <clears throat> uh, again if it's too big or too small there will be a concern about the normality of the distribution in general. But we're not going to really discuss the kurtosis and the skewedness uh, as much as we would like to, because, uh, uh, but just make sure that you understand the symmetry of the shape for the skewedness and kurtosis is, has to do with the uh, peakedness, uh, peakedness, P-E-A-K, 
K-E-D-N-E-S-S. Uh, if there's an accent problem here or my accent is not clear. The range, it has something to do with the fact that uh, we could subtract the largest value from the smallest value. Since we had the largest value, the maximum 100, the smallest value is 58, so the range is 42. The sum of all the data is 3,266, and the count is 39. A piece of grade, meaning this class has 39 students in it. So this is basically the descriptive statistics. Uh, what we could do in order to look at the scattered uh, uh, data, I could go ahead and uh, select all that. I'm going to go ahead and uh, press Control, Shift, down arrow to select all the data. I could go to Insert, and I could go ahead and create a scattered uh, line to show uh, where the data is being clustered and see which where uh, based on the fact that it has a skewed a, uh, a negative value which is not very bad it's the minus uh, 0 0.39 so it's almost minus 3.4 uh, 0 0.4 so you will see there is uh, some skewedness toward the left for example that will give you an indication which is a true I'm going to go ahead and uh, go to this graph. I'm going to click on it, and you will be uh, able to uh, go to add chart elements here under the design. Okay, and I could go ahead and put a thread line, uh, and I'm going to ha go ahead and treat it as a linear. So you'll see there's more more pieces of data toward the uh, cluster around the uh, left side. That's where the negative skewedness uh, came. Uh, into the result that we have seen earlier. So basically, uh, this is a good uh, clustered uh, uh, data. It's always, uh, as you notice, it's uh, actually going around the thread line. So there is no, not a lot of data is very far or very, uh, and you notice here, I could go ahead and see that the smallest value in this case, since we had it 80, uh, 58 and the largest value was 100 then we could go ahead and change uh, the if I click here into the format axis so instead of taking it as zero the minimum value I'm clicking the right button on those numbers so because you're not going to be able to see what I'm doing I'm going to go ahead and put it into like 50 so and of course here we could go ahead and do it uh, 102 uh, because we don't really just be on the edge of the 100 and hit here. So this gives you a better view of how the data is a cluster around the uh, uh, trend line. So this is basically the trend line is going to help us uh, see a better view of the data and how it's got a cluster around that, that line. Of course, there are 39 pieces of data here, which is going to really make it a lot clearer uh, to understand how things are being uh, entered and if there is a correct uh, process of entering the data, which obviously there is because we don't have any data that is beyond 100, knowing that data should not be uh, greater than 100. There is no negative data associated with the score. Uh, that could be uh, dealt with the uh, data validation in Excel anyway. Uh, this is, should be giving you uh, a good indication how we're going to be generating a quick uh, uh, descriptive statistics about uh, a range of data. You don't have to really use only one score. You could do a really three or four scores, and every score is going to have its own uh, uh, list of description, descriptive statistics, which will enable you to compare different means, different standard error, different uh, uh, standard deviation. The standard error here, maybe we could actually go ahead and mention a little bit about it. Uh, basically, it's uh, the standard deviation. I want to go ahead and show it to you here. It's the standard deviation, which is this one here. Uh oh, I'm going to go ahead and do it down. So I'm going to go, go up very quickly. Obviously, I will go ahead and use this. Going control up, take me all the way up to see what I'm doing here. It's going to be the standard deviation, which is this one here. Uh, divided by open parentheses the square root square root uh, in this case is the number of the data which is in which is 39 I remember that this is how many pieces of data we entered so this is basically uh, it's going to give me the the standard error so to calculate the standard error you take the standard deviation divided by the square root of the number of the items 
Uh, there will be more discussion about the standard error, standard deviation, and of course the sample variance because we have a lot of tests based on these values in the future. Uh, but at least now for this video, you need to just look at the descriptive, descriptive statistics and how easily we were able to generate it. Uh, you might be able to look at some of the discussion or hear it again, listen to it again, and maybe you would like to search what is a skewed, uh, skewedness uh, or skewness and, and kurtosis means, and you want to really further your reading and understanding about them, at least you have a start point here to go with. Thank you very much for wait, uh, for watching. This is Dr. Sam Hajazi. I hope to see you in the next video. Take care.